your brush. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Art Shed. I'm Kathy, and in this video, we're going to be learning how to draw and paint our coral reef watercolour project. Now we're going to be doing this in two parts. So in the first part, we'll learn how to draw all the different things in the picture. And then in the second part, we're going to learn how to paint it. So for this first part, you're going to need some ordinary paper to practice on, a pencil, probably a rubber. And I want to tell you a couple of other things that I'll be using in this video so that you can get those things ready if you want to. Now I've done my picture on a very big sheet of watercolour paper and that is called A2. And the other thing you might notice is that I've got a white border all the way round. Now I quite like doing that and what I do is I use some ordinary masking tape and I tape it around the edge of my picture and then right at the end when my picture is completely dry I peel it off and it kind of gives me a frame. Now, of course, you don't have to do that. You might not have masking tape at home. Now, the other thing that I also use in this video is something called masking fluid or drawing gum. Now, the stuff I'm using in this video is blue. Sometimes it's white or a sort of creamy yellow color. But again, you don't have to use this and I'll explain what I do with it later on. So let's have a really good look at this picture. So here we go, let's have a good look. So we've got our fisherman out. He's having quite a good day. I think he's caught some fish there. Although I think these guys are trying to hang on to stop him being caught. But what the fisherman doesn't know is that we've got this shark hanging out underneath his boat, ready to pounce on the fish. Now we've got a happy scene here. We've got our clown fish over here. We've got an angel fish here a crab and a sleepy turtle in a cave, and then lots of plant life. So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be learning how to draw all these different shapes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create, so if I show you here, two sheets of what I call ingredients for our picture. So you can see here that I've got a shark, an angel fish, clown fish, crab. So I'm going to show you how to do those and then on here I've got my plants and rocks. So actually I haven't used loads and loads of different things um, just to keep it reasonably simple and I've just put them so you can probably see I've just put them in different places so like I've actually got three of those here. So what we'll do is maybe if you can get um, if you've got some A3 paper ready that would be quite good a pencil and a rubber and if you can create yourself some sheets like this, that would be great because when we come to draw our picture, you'll then have lots of ideas for your picture. So I'm going to start with the plants and what I'm going to do, because you can print these off at home if you've bought this tutorial, I'm going to draw them one by one so at least you can watch how I do it. So if you get stuck drawing them, you can just find this bit in the video where I draw them for you. So here we go. So here are some of the different plants and corals. So you'll probably notice that they're all got nice wavy squiggly lines. This one looks a little bit like an upside down hat with um, looks like a bit of jelly exploding out there but really they've got lots and lots of little worms. And then this one's like a tree and you might have seen me putting these in. That's a really good way of breaking up the branches. And then the easiest way to think about drawing it is and imagine you're going up a road round a cul-de-sac always come back to the road every now and then you can go and visit a cul-de-sac and back down 
So you can see that with all of those. And then this guy here, he's just a squiggly, squiggly one with some holes in. I also have a couple of rocks there for you to look at, which I probably won't need to demonstrate. The main thing is that if you do some big rocks like this, just remember that the bottom of them is often sitting on the sand, so they're quite flat. So I'll move on to the fish now. So have a quick look at what we're going to be drawing here. I've got a crab, a clownfish and an angelfish, a shark, a sleeping turtle and some other fish. These guys here I'm going to show you how to paint later on so I'm just going to draw these ones and of course you might have lots of other different ones you want to put in your picture. So I'm going to start with my clownfish who quite handily starts with a nice Smile. So there's my clownfish and there's my crab. I think my crab looks like he starts with a burger box there so that's quite a nice shape to think about and now i'm going to move on to the angelfish now i'll have a quick look the angelfish just here it's a really good idea if you just start by drawing yourself a circle so you can watch me do that one So there's my angelfish, so I'm going to move on to the sleepy turtle. So here's my sleeping turtle and the shapes on his shell are kind of like hexagons but obviously you could do spots or stripes or even keep it plain. So the last one to do is our shark, if you want a shark in your picture. So he's got a nice smooth bullet shape. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're going to do a very light, very shallow rainbow shape going over like this. And then when I get to the end, I'm just going to curve in a bit. And that's kind of like the end of his nose. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go around. There we go. And then the bottom of his body is a very similar line. So again, I'm kind of stroking the paper because it can be hard in one go to get a nice smooth line. There we go. And then just here, I am going to imagine his mouth going in and coming back out again. And I'm going to put all those teeth in that bit there. So I might give him an eye just here. And then let's put on his tail. So that top bit of his tail is slightly bigger than the bottom of his tail. There we go. And then he's got that fin that we all know from a shark. And that's at the top here. And then just got the similar shape coming down here. And another one here. So I'll just put his eye in. 
they got tiny eyes, but this guy's quite big. And then his menacing teeth. They've got so many teeth sharks. So obviously I'm just drawing a few. Okay, there he is. So that's my fish and so we've done the fish and the plants. So have a practice at those. And now I'm gonna show you how I put all these different shapes into my picture. So I've got my big piece of watercolour paper here and you can see that I've got some masking tape on the edge and that's because I want that nice white border once I've finished painting. So I've got my pencil and my rubber and also I've got these sheets with all the ingredients on for my picture. So we've learnt how to do all these shapes. So this will be good to remind me what sort of things I can put in my picture. So I'm going to put those up here. So let's remind ourselves of what we are trying to draw. So there's a lot going on in this picture and sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to know where to start. So we've learnt all the different shapes, but how do we put them together? Well, the important thing is that you've got to think in layers and things overlapping each other. So the very first thing you want to draw is whatever is going to be right at the front of your picture. So you can see that I've got these two bits of seaweed waving around. And then behind that, I wonder if you can see, I've got a layer of rock. And on that rock, I've drawn some more of my plants. And then behind that, I have another layer of rock. So you can see how I've built my picture up. So let's get going. And I'll put this over here. And I'm going to have another look at my sheet of plants. So I just talked about the tallest ones being at the front. So I'm going to go for this guy here. Now I'm going to press quite hard with my pencil so that you can see what I'm doing. But when you do this, it's really quite important that you don't press too hard because you want to be able to rub things out. So I'm going to start just here with those two lovely bits of waving seaweed. So here we go. So that is my tallest plants sitting right at the front. So now I'm going to think of what's going to go behind it. So I'm going to do a layer of rock. So I'm going to start it about here because over here I wanted to have a cave. If you remember where my sleepy turtle was sitting, or sleeping rather. So I'm going to go up here. And as soon as I hit that, I've got to stop because this is in front of my rock. Okay, so now I've got another surface to put some different plants on. So that's a good time to go back to your sheet, have a look at the different ones we've got. Obviously you can put lots of different plants in, not just these, but I, I really like that one and this one. These are quite tall, so I might put those in first. So I'm gonna start over here with that one that looks a bit like a tree. So I've put my first layer of rock in, and so now I'm ready to do the one behind. Now you might remember I had a cave here. So I'm just gonna put a couple more rocks in just here. Little giant pebbles. There you go. And then from there, I'm going to put 
at my cave shape. That is where my turtle has decided it's a really good place for his bed. So I'll draw him in later. So I'm now going to do that line that's going to go behind all these things. So it's a bit higher. It's got a bit of a sort of rocky cliff thing going on here. Coming down. And remember, if you hit any of the plants you've already drawn, you need to make sure you don't draw over them. It might be a bit fiddly. If you draw over them by mistake, it doesn't matter. You just rub it out. Now I'm going to imagine going there and maybe down here and here and maybe the upper bin and down here. So now what I've got is another layer of rock on which I can put some plants. So I'm going to put some tiny little Remember now, because it's further away, everything is going to get smaller. And that's quite important if you want your picture to have some perspective and some depth to it. So this is exactly the same shape, the roads with the cul-de-sacs. Now I'm not going to draw any more plants on this bit, I'm going to show you why. So let's go back and have a look at my picture. Now I wonder if you can see all these plants here and they're all white. Now I use a very special liquid for that and it's called masking fluid. So I've got a bottle of it here and it's called drawing gum on this bottle. But what it is, it's kind of like a liquid rubber and this one's blue and we're going to be painting that blue liquid onto our paper before we paint and we're going to let it dry and later on when we peel it off it leaves all these lovely white bits even the bubbles and I've got some sort of plants there so I don't need to draw those because we're going to paint those on so now I'm ready to put on any of my fish or any creatures that I want in my sea so now let's have a look I've got all these guys to put in my sea. So I think I'll start with him. And I'm going to put him in my cave. So let's try and squeeze him in down here. So I think I'll start with his eyes. So I've done my sleepy turtle and I think I'll move on to my crab. I might put him over here actually. It's a nice lot of space here. So I've got a couple of crabs in here, my sleepy turtle, and now I'm going to go back and I'm going to start putting in my clownfish and my angelfish and then my shark. Now I see these little fellas. If I have another look at this picture, what you'll notice is that these are all blue and I haven't drawn them. I've just painted them in with paint. So later on, I'll show you exactly how to do that. So at the moment, all I'm going to do is draw the bigger fish. So I've got my clownfish and my angelfish. And now before I do my shark, I need to start thinking about where I'm going to put the surface of my sea. So let's have another look. So we've got a little bit of sky. And I wonder if you can see I've done a kind of curved mark because I want it to look like the boat is bobbing around 
in the trough of a wave. So there are the waves going up. You can keep yours in a straight line or make it even more wavy. Totally up to you. So I'm going to start about here. And I'm going to go along. Now you can do this in little lines like this. And then once you're happy, you can go over it. So I think I'm quite happy with that. Doesn't need to be a really strong line because you're going to paint it later. Okay, that will do. And so I'm going to put my boat in just here and then I know where I'm going to put my shark in. So to do my boat, what I found easiest is just putting a piece of wood right at the front of the boat that holds all the boat together and putting that in first. So it's like a plank of wood, there's the top. And then it comes down under the water to a bit of a point. And then from here, I'm gonna build my boat up. So I'm gonna do the sides, which are gonna be curved like this. because we're only seeing the front of this boat. And then I'm gonna give that a plank of wood And then the sides are going to curve round to the bottom of that piece of wood. Now I've got a kind of large rowing boat, but you might have a different type of boat. I might bring that plank out a bit. And then I'm going to put a mast just in case he has a sail that he wants to put up. And then this is made of big planks of wood so I'm just going to put those lines in. Try and keep it the same on the other side. Okay, that'll do. Now I had a fisherman hanging out his boat, so I'm going to draw him in now. Obviously you can put whatever you want in your boat. But he's, there's his back, coming to the edge. And then to avoid drawing a whole face, because I didn't really want to do that, is I'm just going to put a hat in. So there's the curve of the hat. There's another curve and that's the top of the hat here. Now I don't have to worry too much about his face. And then he's got an arm hanging out over the water. And the other one there we go. So it kind of looks like he's pulling his fishing line. So now I'm going to put my shark in, and I wanted him hanging out just below the boat. He's a cheeky, cheeky shark who's just lying in wait to catch those fish that my fisherman is hoping to take home for his dinner. Okay, so there he is, ready to pounce on those fish. So that's all the drawing I need to do for now. I might put, let's just have a look. I might put, I haven't put any of these in, so I might find a place for a few of these. And then I'll show you what we're going to be doing next. So I've done all my drawing, and now at this stage, I'm going to actually outline my drawing with a fine liner pen. Now, what's really important about this is that it is a permanent, it needs to say permanent marker on it, because that means that when you put water on it, it won't run everywhere. Now, you can do this right at the end of your picture. And especially if you don't have a permanent fine liner, what you can do is do your painting first. And then once your painting's dry, you can use any black pen to go over. 
but I'm going to do mine now because it just kind of means that when I put the colours on I don't lose my lines. So I've outlined everything that's in the foreground. I'm not going to outline my shark because he's in the distance. And also with my boat, what I'm going to do is outline the top of it, but not the bit that's in the water because I want that to, again, look all a bit blurry later on. So I don't really want to outline it. Okay, so there we go. So the next bit that we're going to do is use the special blue masking fluid. So I'm ready to do my masking fluid. I've poured a little bit out into my palette. Now I've got a special masking fluid applicator, which is, it's made of rubber. Now you probably won't have one of those. So you can use just a normal brush. So for example, one like this, but what's really, really important is that as soon as you use it, you wash it straight away. Because if this blue masking fluid dries on your brush, what happens is you can't really get it off easily and it ruins your brush. So that's really, really important. So let's have another quick look at what we're trying to do with this masking fluid. So here's the picture I've already done. And what we're doing now is any bits that we want white, we're gonna paint with masking fluid. So you can see here that I've painted that with this special fluid. I've put any little bits on my fish, maybe their eyes, and anything, so all my little plants, I've gone and put a little bit on the top because I want some little sparkly reflections in the water. So you can watch where I put my masking fluid and then decide where you want to put yours. So I'm gonna start down here. And what I'm gonna do is make these little, I don't know what they're called, but they're those things that are on rocks that are really furry. So they're like little circles. I think like those things that you see if you watch Finding Nemo. I think they live in things a bit more like this, but they've got lots and lots of little wormy shapes. So I'm gonna put those in places. Make sure you put this liquid on quite thick because if it's really, really thin, it's gonna be quite tricky to get off. I might have a few bits coming out the bottom. And I'm going to go around the eyes of my, you can cover in the whole eye if you want it to stay white. I might do a little line on the top. So that's going to act later on as a kind of reflection. So if you imagine that the light is coming down through the water and it's hitting the tops of all these plants. So even these bits, just the tops of some of them, I'm gonna, not all of them, because I'd be here forever. And my angel fish, I'm gonna make sure I do their eyes. So you can see I've put quite a lot of masking fluid on mine. I've done lots of little plants and put highlights on the tops of some of my coral. I've done the eyes of the fish. I've done the teeth on my shark and his eye and I put a little reflection on the top and my turtle. So you've just got to imagine that anything that's turned blue like that later on, right at the end of your picture, you're going to be able to rub off and it's going to be white. So the last thing I need to do is put on some bubbles. Okay. 
So there's my masking fluid done and it's really, really important that you wait for it to completely dry before you start the painting. So this is a good time to have a break.